Welcome to the fourth session of the 2021 Asia Pacific Leaders Dialogue for Malaria Elimination, Sustaining Finance During COVID-19. This session will explore how financing commitments towards malaria were sustained amidst the COVID-19 pandemic and the lessons these experiences can offer on broader budget prioritization efforts. We will hear first-hand experiences from Sri Lanka, a country that has been working actively on post-elimination efforts, China, which recently achieved WHO status, and Vietnam, a country that is nearing elimination. Our panelists for this session are Dr. Lakshmi Somatunga, the Additional Secretary, Public Health Services from the Ministry of Health, Sri Lanka. Dr. Lakshmi currently leads policy and evaluation of all public health programs. She previously served as the Director of Non-Communicable Diseases, during which she launched a National Tobacco Control Program and an Injury Prevention Program for the Ministry of Health. She has also served as Director for Mental Health, during which she initiated a Mental Wellbeing Program. Finally, Dr. Lakshmi has chaired the Commonwealth Advisory Committee on Health for the past four years. We also have with us today Dr. Jo Xiaonong, Director General of the National Institute of Parasitic Diseases at the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention. In addition to leading China's National Institute of Parasitic Diseases, Dr. Xiaonong has worked closely with the WHO, both on research projects and serving as a member on expert committees. He has published more than 200 leading papers, several books in relevant fields, and has also been principal investigator of national research projects. Dr. Xiaonong has been awarded several prizes as a result of his extensive research achievements. Last but not least, Dr. Tran Thang Dong, the director of National Institute of Malaria, Malariology, Parasitology and Entomology, Vietnam. Dr. Dong is the lecturer at two medical universities in Vietnam and has several years of experience working in the Ministry of Health in the control of infectious diseases. Our moderator for this panel discussion is Professor Calypso Chal Chalkudu, who heads the Global Funds Health Financing Department. Prior to this, she served as the Director of Global Health Policy at the Center for Global Development and Director of the Global Health and Development Group at Imperial College's Institute of Global Health Innovation. Professor Calypso has worked with the World Bank, the UK Department for International Development, and the Inter-American Development Bank. She also founded NICE International, a nonprofit within the UK's National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. With this, I hand over the mic to Professor Calypso. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our session. Uh, we've got a series of distinguished speakers with us. If I may start with a few observations before we get into the uh, discussion. I think it's a really important topic we're discussing today, and it's important also to acknowledge that the Asia Pacific region have made tr tremendous progress uh, towards uh, controlling and eradicating malaria. Uh, the region has seen over the past decade a reduction of cases by half and of deaths by almost 90 percent. And uh, as we've just heard in the introduction of this session, a number of countries have reached elimination status and others are uh, in course of, of achieving that. However, achieving the regional goal of malaria elimination by 2030 is not going to be easy and will require even more resources and more concerted efforts. I wanted to highlight uh, for our speakers, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we'll be able to discuss this during the Q&A, a number of challenges I, th I, th I see from the health financing perspective um, that have to do with budget visibility and how budgets are prioritized in different uh, settings. First, the decentralization and devolution agenda poses challenges. I think it's important to acknowledge that uh, the way malaria budgets in many countries are also decentralized, the visibility at the national level of exactly what amount of resources devoted region by region, especially when regions are contributing, regional governments are contributing their own resources, is, is quite hard. It's hard to uh, track resources, and that's quite problematic. A second point has to do with uh, fungibility of resources due to service integration, uh, both for elimination and pre-elimination settings. So, for instance, when we talk about surveillance, uh, this is a general health system budget, which is important. At the same time, it makes it harder to understand exactly what resources are devoted to uh, surveillance specifically to malaria. 
Uh, a third issue is uh, other vector, vector borne diseases, a country like India with multiple diseases, uh, such as dengue, for instance, exist, where again, there's a risk that the malaria budget is lost when it comes to human resources for health, surveillance, diagnostics, etc. that these are lost within the bigger, wider uh, budget dedicated to controlling vector-borne diseases. And finally, and again, I hope we can discuss this later today, uh, the issue of cross-border, uh, the cross-border programs, India and Bhutan, for instance, or Thailand and the Mekong region, and migrant populations, in particular populations are moving across borders, including um, uh, illegal migrants. We appreciate the legal migrant populations a lot of the time are incorporated, are included in schemes, but a lot of the time uh, these are unregistered populations. So how do we tackle uh, the issue of malaria control elimination in these settings with uh, populations that we can't identify or we, we countries do not include in their scheme. So, and of course, Artemis and resistance makes this issue even harder. So a lot of good news, but also a lot of challenges, I think, going forward. So without further ado, I will um, move, on, move us on to the Q&A session. This is how we're going to run this. I'm going to address questions to uh, our distinguished uh, panel members. I'm going to ask them to speak for a maximum of three to four minutes, please, so we all have time to, to contribute. And I'm going to start with the first question, which I would like to address to all three of our panelists. And I'll start with uh, Dr. Lakshmi, if, if I may. So this is my question. What are the key challenges that you faced in trying to keep the malaria budget intact throughout the pandemic? Uh, what did your country do at national and subnational levels to advocate for the prioritization of malaria in your budgets? So how did you keep the budget intact? How did you fight to prioritize the budget even in the context of uh, COVID-19? Dr. Lakshmi, over to you first. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings from Sri Lanka. It's a pleasure to be a part of this uh, discussion, especially as a country which reached prevention of reintroduction of malaria. Uh, Sri Lanka uh, faced three waves of COVID-19. Uh, with a case load of 572,180 as a person uh, with a total of 14,000 or deaths. So it was a real challenge to respond to the epidemic effectively and uh, as well as to sustain the routine services, uh, including malaria. But fortunately, our government has a policy uh, and it is continued as a policy to maintain the services of national priority, where public health programs that had reached elimination status like malaria and HIV AIDS, mother to child transmission, falls together with immunization, especially the childhood immunization, mother, uh, maternal and child health services, emergencies. So uh, that was our uh, really plus point. Uh, what were the mechanism of funding? Uh, it's worth mentioning here. Within the country, we had a, uh, our own uh, uh, mechanism, COVID-19 response fund. So where there was a fundraising movement in the country named responsibility. In our language, we say it come up. So all well-wishers continue and this fund was of immense support spending for COVID-19 expenses so that the routine funding uh, on other programs was, uh, I mean, the effect on these programs was reduced. That is first thing. And second, whatever the funding received for COVID-19 was carefully managed. So it came directly from countries, WHO, UNICEF, uh, GF, JICA, like other uh, development uh, um, stakeholders. And we carefully manage this funding on COVID-19 response so that our routine funding uh, to have a, I mean, better place, right? And how did we advocate? And where did we advocate for priority, especially malaria? Because at the national level, COVID-19 review meetings, we had to advocate this. And at the dialogue between line ministry and 
provincial authorities at monitoring meetings. And there were instances uh, that there are our resources, especially uh, the vehicles and you know, our uh, human resource uh, for malaria control, temporarily moving for other COVID related activities. Uh, but uh, uh, fortunately we have a, a, a very energetic anti-malaria campaign staff who rigorous, rigorously monitor malaria control uh, in the country with its staff responsible for each region. So they work as a one group and we were able to sustain our uh, activities uh, to greatest level. So um, with mutual understanding, we were able to continue our activities uh, with minimum effect because uh, most importantly, uh, we explore the synergies between COVID-19 and malaria. Uh, um, and the fact that we were able to detect cases from quarantine centers where many re returned to Sri Lanka from all over the world, uh, and especially uh, where the malaria is endemic, and we convinced uh, the government that uh, of importance of maintaining the status of malaria, um, what Sri Lanka gave. So in uh, summary, uh, the advocacy uh, to higher level was very important. It was a key thing um, to continue to safeguard the routine activities and continued monitoring and center, central provincial dialogue. So these uh, three uh, measures uh, really were of utmost importance to sustain our priority for malaria. Over. Thank you, Dr. Lakshmi. This is very, very helpful. Thank you. I wanted to pass on to Dr. Zhu now from um, the China CDC. Over to you, Dr. Zhu. Thank you. As you know, China is a big country and uh, the geographically and the culture, social, economic situation is a very uh, different from uh, place to place. So the challenge for our China to be prevented for reintroduction of the malaria is very, very important. Particularly, China is a newly eliminated the malaria in this year. And so uh, mosquitoes still exist in China and uh, our imported cases uh, still, you know, uh, 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 had a bigger number. Um, in, for example, in, 19, uh, in the 2019, uh, two years ago, before the COVID-19, we have more than 2,600 cases, imported cases, uh, they uh, appear in, reported in our country. And uh, most of them came from a uh, 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 border area as well as from Africa. And all those uh, imported cases will affect it to us, uh, 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 will give us a bigger challenge to, uh, give the uh, uh, prevention of the reintroduction of this uh, uh, um, disease. So uh, our country actually had a, uh, maintained uh, the working mechanism, cooperate the, among the different sectors. So probably, you know, uh, when we launched the malaria elimination program, we have 13 different kind of uh, uh, ministries they signed the document uh, to make the action plan for malaria elimination. Now we declare the malaria eliminate. So we still keep those uh, 13 different department uh, ministries work together and uh, to prevent the uh, 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 reintroduction of the malaria into China. So uh, we issued another document the document uh, to prevent the reintroduction of malaria and uh, issued uh, signed by the, these 13 different uh, ministers. So this is a very important document uh, for our cooperating each other among different uh, sectors. Second, and uh, technically, we also uh, are working on the, our strategy plan for another five years. And uh, this is a very important uh, document uh, to uh, allocate the, our uh, work, uh, technical work. For example, first uh, we did the uh, 
uh, risk mapping uh, for those uh, area probably have those imported cases. And uh, particularly in the border, around the border area, we mark those area is a uh, red color. And the second kind of uh, risk area is uh, uh, counties with uh, multiple malaria transmission uh, 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 risks. And those, uh, uh, particularly those uh, uh, white population is uh, very high during last 10 years. So those country we, we put the uh, mark the uh, actually the pink color. And then, uh, and then uh, we using the different way of the species. Maybe this can the reintroduction of the PFLC parent or P vivax, and then uh, the potential transmission area. So we divided into six uh, different uh, risk area and uh, with the different uh, potential risk in different area. So once we divide these six different catalogs of the uh, area in, 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 at the county level, so the government at the county will be pay attention on those uh, area with a, a red color or pink color. Uh, so they have the local government they have to allocate some uh, resources, not only the funds, but also the human resources. And I encourage you with them and I always discuss with the local government to say, you have to keep the capacity uh, 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 to prevent the reintroduction for more than 10 years, at least in this kind of area, because uh, surrounding uh, uh, our country, uh, uh, the regional uh, plan is uh, goes to eliminate the malaria by 2030. So we have to maintain this capacity, uh, capacity at least uh, until the 2030. So uh, uh, this is a very important, uh, 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 but at the central level, because we have the multi-sector uh, cooperation mechanism. So this five years working plan can be helpful for the uh, government, the central government to allocate the uh, budget for those uh, 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 work. And, uh, and those work is, a, is a really important. For example, we still keep the system to be set up the uh, 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 reference laboratory and, uh, and, uh, uh, and also the networking uh, 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 in the country. For example, we divided the country into six, uh, into four different uh, networking area. And uh, for example, the central part and the south, east south zone and the southern zone and the northern zone. And each zone uh, consists of from five to six, seven provinces. They work together locally. So it's a sort of the sub-regional, uh, sub-national uh, uh, networking. So this is also very important. They work with each other because they have shared the same culture and share the same geographical features. And so this is really, really important. Of course, uh, the border area is always an important area for us. So we need uh, to do some uh, corporate work, international corporate work, uh, together with the other country around the border. For example, Myanmar and uh, Vietnam and uh, the uh, Lao Cambodia. So uh, this is uh, really important. Of mm -hmm. course, we still need uh, to keep our communication level with the other countries uh, where the imported cases are a lot, particularly in the African country. So all Thank those you. are really important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Zhu. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dong, over to you. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, I could like to thank you for all you invite me to attend a uh, very important uh, dialogue. Uh, for this day, also, I want to learn from uh, other country. Also, I could like to share the, the country information. Uh, first of all, for the, uh, what key challenges in uh, Vietnam? The first integration of public health centers at the province level into CDC. It needing to reduction of malaria focus. Reassignment of drone and function across the shop position. Both uh, provincial staff in charge, especially those who are new to us, may not be familiar with the integrated healthcare planning and budgeting at their level. Multi-function health center at each and communal level 
requiring the health staff to multitask needing to work overnight. In the context of the COVID-19, it is directed to focus on health spending on COVID-19 response. In case COVID-19, last four years, it will affect budget allocation to other particular programs, including malaria. In this situation, resurgence of malaria may occur, fitting the achievement of the malaria program effort in the last 10 years. The last, the COVID-19 pandemic has had significant impact on Vietnam, the national renew in 2020. In the solution of Parliament uh, 128, it is instructed that all resources are mobile for the control of COVID-19. Therefore, spending for other health programs may be experienced in significant reduction. The Manara program will probably receive less funding. In the event of the COVID-19 increase, redirection of Maria's funding and interruption of the Maria activity may need to resurge the Maria in certain areas of the Vietnam. The next one is what did your country do at the national and subnational level? The first at national level, firm's commitment of the government of Vietnam to eliminate malaria by 2013. Vietnam's strategic plan roadmap and technical guidance for malaria control and elimination as a timeline update. In night, the GMF the common strategy and update your updates guideline. Malaria risk is evaluated and strategy every three or five years at the communal level. With support from Global Fund under the right grant, the advocacy workshop has been organized every year for mobilization of budget from the potential partners and province in authority for malaria control and elimination. In addition, the National Malaria Control and Elimination Program has made detail by co-financing plan for 2021 up to 2025 and already submitted to the Ministry of Health to get the National Strategic Plan 2021-2025 for approval. The Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Finance then will submit them to the government for approval. The government will consider the updated malaria situation of the year and will give approval for the counterpart budget year by year. At the sub level, province and government only finance their health population program and request to charge activity private belong to the national health population program to recurring the budget category. In eye of the Nagon chain, the Ministry of Finance sent office letter to the Ministry of Health and Guidance to the target for national program spending for 2021 should be moved to recurring budget category at both national and sub-national level. Further, in this letter also the requested MOA to guide the local government to be fully respond for the financing national health population target program at the local needy in 2020. In the right grant, the province people committee has made right and commitment to contribute counterpart funding for malaria control activity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. And in fact, uh, the point you've last uh, uh, you touched on lastly on uh, moving to recurrent budgets is quite important. And I'll come back to that in my very last question addressed to you. But if I may now uh, take us back to uh, China and Sri Lanka, who have both achieved elimination status, and many congratulations to China for having done this uh, this year, uh, given the the size of the country, as Dr. Zhu explained to us, it's uh, no small feat. So it's very important for the global fight. So I want to ask you first, Dr. Zhu, how has budgeting for prevention of reintroduction activities, which is so critical, has been? How has it been different 
from budgeting for elimination activities before? What, what was the difference? Thank you. Thank you for this uh, important question. Actually, uh, before we got the certificate, uh, we already started thinking about this one. What's the major difference? Of course, the working uh, uh, way is different because it used to be we would like to those uh, uh, treatment of the patient and focus on those uh, foci uh, 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 deposing as well as a cleanup of the infection sources. And now, because uh, uh, zero uh, in the you know, cases happened in China for more than four years already, so we are majorly actually to do the work to uh, uh, to do the multi uh, cooperation work. For example, particularly during the COVID-19, we did a lot of work uh, working together with the uh, uh, customs because uh, the people now the entry into the country is difficult. But uh, during the uh, quarantine time, we still find some uh, uh, actually imported cases. So that's why we have more chance to cooperate with the customs. This, this is the one of a very uh, important feature. Second one is surveillance and uh, a response system we have to uh, be uh, uh, strengthening uh, further and uh, so this is a surveillance and response system is really important uh, not only during the elimination stage but also in the i wonder if we have temporarily lost dr Zhu. his screen seems to have frozen um so maybe i will pass over to Dr. Lakshmi with exactly the same question and we'll return to Dr. Zhu to complete uh, once he's back with us. Dr. Zhu, are, we, are you there? Let me just check one last minute. Okay, Dr. Lakshmi, please over to you and I will return to Dr. Zhu once he's reconnected. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is a very, very important question. At the outset, I want to mention that achieving this great public health milestone of elimination phase, prevention of reintroduction of malaria sometimes place Sri Lanka to a disadvantaged position in view of finance. It is equally important to maintain this status once achieved, but uh, the priority for these countries has not been given continuously, starting with WHO. WHO is our regular partner. In by by enium funding, it is now reduced to one sixth or sometimes one eighth of funding compared to earlier. Uh, when I uh, mentioned about uh, global fund, even the situation is worse. Earlier, we used to uh, receive 40 million USD, then it came to 7 million, and then 2.5 million USD. Drastically, it's it's 94 percent reduction compared to earlier. And also, the mechanism of funding also was altered. Now, for an example, for other programs to give, uh, the funding is available at the initiation. But for malaria, Sri Lanka, this was that first we need to spend and then we had to get it reimbursed. So uh, uh, that is that also uh, really uh, faced us in very difficult situation sometimes. And now finally, we will not be uh, uh, obtaining uh, any funds uh, hereafter. Coming to our own uh, government of Sri Lanka, it has uh, also reduced, but uh, not to that uh, drastic situation, but it is around half of uh, the funding compared to earlier. This fact actually should be uh, given due focus. And I hope the situation will be better in view of maintaining malaria-free uh, regions and then world uh, and uh, uh, the global attention and the attention of all uh, global partners, uh, I mean, uh, should be uh, focused on this very important aspect. Over. Thank you very much, Dr. Lakshmi, the importance of funding. 
and domestic funding, and of course, during the transition, which is a, a big risk. We might move back to Vietnam and Dr. Duong uh, to discuss with us his experience of Vietnam, which is in a different situation right before elimination with the commitment of the government, as you've ex ex uh, described to us, Dr. Duong, to reach elimination within um, uh, the next few years. But having listened to our colleague from Sri Lanka and China, the difficulties of transitioning from uh, external to domestic funding. How is Vietnam preparing for this transition? Over to you. Yeah, thank you for the very important question. I think the Vietnam for the transition phase, we think, uh, have uh, evaluated or uh, review all of the activity and the budget uh, from the uh, Manara program. Also, we uh, uh, evaluate from the national, also the province level and district level. We know that there are some difficulty for the the the, the waste, uh, uh, money from the different uh, level. Also, we made a plan for in the future. We uh, the uh, the Ministry of Health also they have a plan submit to government to investment for the malaria control step by step. And uh, uh, but I think the in terms of uh, pandemic uh, uh, time. Uh, the almost uh, budget uh, investor for the pandemic control. There are some of money uh, government uh, investor for malaria control. We think we uh, uh, contribute uh, um, budget from government also budget from the global fund so we can achieve uh, the malaria elimination in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Duong. Uh, I see. Dr. Zhu, Dr. Zhu, please over to you to complete your statement. Thank you. Yes, and uh, actually I would like to say uh, in conclusion that uh, our major work now for the uh, prevent the reintroduction of the malaria is the focus on the surveillance and the early warning. And uh, second one is the capacity uh, maintaining. Third one is the emerging response. And the third one, uh, emerging response through the uh, reference network uh, laboratory. And the fourth one is the uh, interregional prevention and control network. Also, we the last one, the fifth one is uh, uh, to do the cooperation work with uh, uh, customers to uh, enforce our work on the quarantine time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And given the pressures on time and our schedule, I would like to close this session. I would like to thank the organizers and, of course, our distinguished panelists. There's been a wealth of experience shared with us, uh, with the three countries featured here. I think what my take home message is strong political le leadership, strong planning and commitment by the political leaders is absolutely critical to keep on the fight, especially during the difficult transition from external to domestic funding for certain nations. So again, I congratulate you and your countries for your efforts and thank you very much for your time. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Thank you all to the panelists um, and attendees uh, and to Professor Calypso for such an in engaging discussion. I request all participants to return to the attendee hub and tune in to the, attend the last session of the dialogue. Thank you very much. <laughs>